Okay. Um, hi, everybody. Um, welcome. This is Wednesday night with Kenny and Glenn and myself and Cassidy in the background. Um, this is our second presentation. Um, and this is all to help us understand better and reinforce what we already know. Uh, I have to do the disclaimer that, uh, that you remember and promise that you understand that this is highly experimental and is not approved for therapy. Uh, you take full responsibility for building and running your system and you do so at your own risk. Just quietly say to yourself, I do, amen, and we're good to move on. Um, tonight, Kenny's gonna be talking about configuration settings. Um, so this is just a quick overview. And so off we go, Kenny, it's yours. Okay. So. Um Let's see, we'll also add that um, uh, this is not medical advice. Anything I say is um, my understanding of loop and what works for my daughter. If you make changes to you or your child's settings, um, that's on you. Good? Okay. All right. Um, we may not let you stop, Kim. That's fine. I mean, whatever. Yeah, so the idea is to cover it all, right? I don't really care how long it takes to cover it all. All right. All right. So let me oh, yeah. just start by saying that the carb chart here, this, um, what it's trying to show you is active carbs. This is the green graph on the front screen. And so, uh, Glenn, get yours ready, I guess, in here in a little while. Um, oh, okay. So this is the active chart with the carbs that are working at the bottom. You tap on that green graph on the very bottom of your loop screen. So everybody go ahead and do that and look at what you ate today. Um, <laughs> How many carbs, uh, It's this is showing you how many carbs Loop is trying to cover with insulin on board, whatever's active, right, that bottom green graph. So it tries to match the IOV with what it thinks the car, whatever carbs are active as well as kind of the decay rate of those carbs, the absorption time. Okay, so ice, this is the insulin carb effect screen. This is the one everyone's confused about. Hopefully we'll cover it in enough detail if it's not um, then we'll all just, we'll just do it again um, in its own little topic. So um, this is the, the colors are not actually in the loop doc. Um, green means active carbs. So if you go look at here, these are the things that are still working as of the screenshot is as of 2 p.m. You can see the, uh, the meat here, the four hour one, it was done at almost 11. So, and it's got at least a four hour runtime, so it's still active. Um, same with all the other ones. They're still within their active time. So green means we're still working. Um, um, gray means it's done and it was pretty good. So you can kind of see at the bottom, there's a two gram entry here that is, says three grams absorbed. That's close enough. Um, so it's kind of happy with that. Um, sorry, this shot doesn't have more of that. This is one of those days I'm using it as an example for a reason. Um, or, and it, and it's done. You might see yellow if something's not quite right. Like, you probably should look at it. I don't know what the thresholds are for not quite right, but you know, yellow means you should look at it. Um, in the case of this four gram entry here that was set at a 30 minute absorption, um, it, what it has yellowed is the, how many grams it absorbed, which is 50% of what you answered. So it seems like it should highlight that for you. And then uh, 55 minutes is the time it took um, to see those carbs. So it was a fair amount. Um, it basically what happened is it reached the end of the time window it's looking at, which I'll cover in a second. But basically each one of these entries, the absorption time means like the time you entered plus a little bit more is kind of the window of time loop is looking to kind of see those carbs. So in the case of this lower one here, it didn't see all the carbs and it didn't even see it out to its widest, longest window of time it's looking at, which is 55 minutes. Um, I'll explain how you get to that here in a second. So same thing here. Like it didn't see all the carbs and it didn't see, didn't see it even in its full three hour and 10 minute view time. Um, I don't have an example of where the time is not right, but the carbs, oh, I do. It's Glenn's. Where's your screenshot? Here it is. Um, so uh, on this example here on the right, you'd see that the first entry says 24 grams, but it saw 45 grams and it took basically an hour and eight minutes to see the first 24 is really what that means. Um, it saw to the first 24 grams, the amount you entered, it saw 
in an hour and eight minutes. And you said this was a two hour window. So it was hacked. Like you're a big time liar. It was going way up. Saw way more cards in way less time. Um, on the bottom entry here is a good one because it saw 25 grams of carbs, but it saw it in an hour and 43 minutes, which is much less than the three hours originally answered. So um, hopefully that helps with the colors a little bit. Um, Can you okay. explain on that screen that neither one of them are accurate? Yeah, actually, because they're kind of at the same time. Um, Lynn, what I don't get into in the slides, I guess, is how Loop Bay actually calculates carbs fully, but essentially it weights them based on the time. So if it's a two hour entry um, and a three hour entry, like these are running at the same time, it's going to weight more of the carbs it sees toward the two hour one while that one's active and less to the three hour one because it's kind of spread out over more time. So it gets more of a carb per minute idea. Um, the carbs per minute of the two hour one is, is a higher number, higher density than the carbs per minute of a three hour entry. So when they're both running simultaneously, it's gonna credit the most in that two hour ish window to the two hour entry. And then after the two hour entry is done, then the idea is the rest of those carbs will be seen and sort of captured by the three hour. So it, it treats them all somewhat evenly, except for the fact that it waits the absorption time. So yeah, anything entered kind of in that window where something's wrong, it could be, it could be that the entry that you look at that looks the worst is actually not the one that's really off. It could be something else that's overlapping, you know, snacks or a meal you've had in the same window you're looking at. So don't always blame the one that looks the worst. <laughs> it's just how loops waiting, um, assigning the cards it sees. It's a good question. Um, did I cover all this? I did. Okay. So colors, pictures, great. All right. So um, when you see higher carbs or a shorter time than you would expect, it can be a couple of things. Kind of the more obvious ones would be uh, bad sight, which I think was Glenn's example in this case. Um, or I think you didn't, yeah, it fell out or something was happening. I can't remember. Um, well, Luke was delivering insulin. And it's really not seeing the impact of that insulin. Um, could be that you didn't enter enough carbs. I mean, that's sort of an obvious one, but that is a good thing to remember. Uh, could be you have the wrong absorption time. Uh, like a low treat, for example, or juice really doesn't last in your body. If you were to just, just have juice and watch it, um, it's pretty much done doing its thing. You know, if you gave no insulin for it uh, within an hour. So a two hour entry for juice is probably not the best um, absorption time to use, but uh, it's the quick one, right? It's the lollipop, so you use it. It's not gonna get you into too much trouble. You're just gonna see like a, the example of this top one here or the bottom one, actually be more likely, where it saw all the carbs of the juice in less time than you told it. So if, it, if that was the only thing you were, you were taking at the moment. So don't feel like you did something wrong necessarily. It's just that's what's gonna show up as. So the, uh, it, the question is, if we're doing a great job, all our cover, colors should be gray unless it's active? Yeah, gray and green, ideally, yeah. That's what you'd see, yeah. Okay. Um, I mean, don't grade yourself on good job, bad job, but yeah. <laughs> uh, the, but the big thing is if your carb ratio or sensitivity, that the ISF one that everyone's confused about and doesn't really like to look at, if those are off, this is going to be off. Those are the primary levers it uses in addition to time to figure out how many carbs it sees. And we'll go through that. You guys all get to do a little exercise here to prove that. Um, absorption time. Uh, let's look at absorption time real quick before we get into that fun exercise. You wanna talk about the little cloud thing because that takes you to the carb menu? Yeah, so if you just tap on the row of carbs, I, I like this one better. If you tap on this row, it'll just take you to the carb entry for that entry. So you can edit it. So if I wanted to make this, and even if it's after the fact and the carbs are done, if I wanted to see, well, what should it have been? I could come in and I could edit this 30 gram pancake, apple pancake entry over here. And I could change it. And I do often, even though breakfast is well over, I'll go in and, and kind of tweak it. And you can see how the other, other entries around that time sort of change and, and how the absorption time changes and all that stuff. I'll just kind of play with it. Um, and kind of see if maybe what I did wrong or if it's a meal we're not used to, 
I want to kind of see what Luke saw. You can go in and tap on the carb entry and change or edit the time, the absorption time, or honestly, the most common thing I use that for when you're tapping on the carb entry is just to edit the pictures. So I remember what it is we ate because we use the watch to do a lot of our carb entries and you can't pick pictures for those. So I'll go back in later and especially for like a party or something where she's eating a bunch, I'll go back in every once in a while and grab her phone and put some pictures on it so I can kind of guess what it is that she's eating. So make sure I counted it and counted it right. In case I counted it wrong, I want to go, oh, those pretzels were actually double what I thought they were and I can go find it and change it. Um, so if you if you have a yellow screen, you could either be above, your carbs absorbed could either be above what you entered or below what you entered. Yes, it's not necessarily one or the other. It could be either. Yeah. And what does that tell you? Uh, just a warning. Something's wrong. Like it's like you and Loop aren't agreeing um, on what that is. So you can play with that to figure it out. Uh, but again, your carb ratio and your eyes have, have to be close for this to even be super useful. And we'll show that in a second. Absorption time. What is it? What do you need it for? There's this thing. I just talked about this window of time, um, a window that Loop is looking to kind of see the carbs. I'll try to explain this. It's in the algorithm section of the system. Um, it's this, if you're looking in the code, it's even called the absorption time overrun uh, variable. Uh, the default is 1.5. What that means is this is a window with which loop looks for the carbs. And it's sort of a, I should have wrote it down here, but I like to use the term waters down the carb impact. So if you start thinking about how much your carbs should move your blood sugar if you had no insulin, um, yeah, like per minute, um, or per five minutes, I guess, in this case, because you're looking at blood sugar values every five minutes. But the impact the carbs are going to have on your body, think of it as a carb per minute sort of idea. Um, what Loop will do is it, it waters that number down. So if you say what you're going to eat is going to take two hours, Loop says, okay, my buffer I'm going to make is 1.5. So two hours, you see at the bottom, the lollipop entry of two hours turns into like a three-hour window. And it takes uh, those carbs you entered and sort of waters them down to say, you know what, it's the carb per minute impact of this particular entry is actually going to be spread out over three hours, even though you told me two. This is why it's very confusing as you're telling loop two and it's saying, I don't really believe you, I'm going to make it three. Um, and the reason why it's doing that is for a couple things. Uh, safety. So it's easier if you spread out the carb impact and you start dipping maybe early or mid meal, or even at the end of a meal, it's more likely that because Loop assumes less push upward on your blood sugar per minute, that the prediction is going to show you going below your suspend threshold earlier in the middle of a meal. Um, otherwise you're gonna see just, the prediction is just this really high rise, this high spike. Um, if it waters it out, the spike sort of like the rise for carbon impact or spreads out a little bit more. And so if it starts to fall, it'll dip below suspend sooner. And so it's more likely to cut basal to keep you from going low. So it's a kind of a safety feature, but it's also a, um, uh, just like a fuzzy number, right? So we don't have to try to figure out the exact absorption time for every food you're eating. It's a little exhausting. I tried to do that for a while. I changed the overrun time to like a lower number and you have to be much more accurate with the absorption time you, you choose. And if you use a watch, you only have whatever your defaults are. So um, the two, three, and four, or whatever you change it to. So, so um, it's fuzzy, the, basically. Go ahead. Oh, we do have one question from sure. the Facebook chat. Go if on. I enter meat, four hours, potatoes, three hours, ice cream, two hours, mm -hmm. how does Luke know which carbs are being absorbed? Does it just apply the first carbs, the first item. And you actually kind of answered this already, but it basically kind of weights them. Yeah. Uh, so toward, it, let's say the it, earlier carbs. Yeah. So let's say in the first 30 or 40 minutes, it sees, you know, 10 carbs. Um, it's going to distribute that 10 carb impact over those three entries. And more of it's going to go toward the two hour one, a little bit less toward the three hour one and a lot less toward the four hour one. So you might have, I mean, you can actually look at the math and, figured out but let's say five grams out of the 10 went to the two hour entry and three went to the three hour entry and two went to the four hour entry probably more like one most likely but um you pick a five four one is probably what your split would be 
Uh, so it's just a guess. It doesn't really know like which one's which, but it um, while you're while those all three of those carbs are active, it's going to distribute the carbs it sees based on the absorption time more to the smaller ones and less to the bigger ones. Or so all the other, of it, if there's only uh, one. So another question is this example for three entries or three logos in one entry, and and in the particular uh, this this particular yeah. question was three entries. Yeah, that question was three entry. One of my examples at the bottom here, just telling you how this absorption overrun time kind of works, is um, the window of time that Loop is looking to uh, for carbs to have impact is two to three hours for lollipop, three to four and a half hours for a taco, and four to six hours for the default pizza. So yeah, so back to what you're saying in terms of the safety, it's got the safety for the drop mid meal, but it also kind of gives you like this fuzzy room to say, well, you know, pancakes are usually like two hours, but if you eat a lot of them, it might be a little bit more. Or if you have protein pancakes, it might be two and a half hours or even up to three hours. So, um, you know, it's you don't have to be exact on your absorption because what happens is as soon as the windows close, as soon as it's, or really realistically in loop, as soon as it sees all the carbs, it's going to stop helping. It's going to stop giving more insulin. Like it'll see more carbs, but it won't really try to give you more insulin for those because it's seeing them after the fact, after your blood sugar is already going up. So, so um, here's, this is an yeah. interesting comment. At some point I thought I heard Katie say splitting the carb absorption really doesn't make much of a difference. Do you find it does? Uh, I think it's more, well, Katie says it too. We talked about it um, at Disneyland the other day. Uh, Kate it likes to say just use taco for everything the reason why is for just what I talked about which is as soon as it sees all the carbs that it's got this dynamic carb tracking component as soon as it sees all the carbs for the entry so I made it a four hour entry but it saw all the carbs I entered um, loops not really shouldn't be expecting it should adjust its prediction to not see any more impact after that so you just start seeing a drop in the prediction. It says, oh, carbs are done. Um, and so that's true. But I find if you are someone who likes to avoid spikes, for example, you will, you want to match these as best you can. So as short as possible. So a, a lollipop entry, a two-hour entry, will, generally speaking, uh, recommend the most insulin up front for a bolus. A three hour will hold a little bit back because of where insulin's peaking. It's not going to be strong enough to maybe too much up front. And when the pizza one, it's going to give like 50 or 60% up front as a bolus. And then loop will try and help later with the rest of those and apply it later um, as you go. And so if you would like to avoid a spike, which usually happens early, then you want the most insulin up front. So if you have a food, and again, if you look, if you guys open up your loop app and you, um, try to add a carb and you go to, you tap on, I know I don't have the display. You tap on the food type uh, where all the pictures are, but tap on the word food type. You get all these emojis that show up here and you can flip through them, right? But they're in categories of fast, medium, and slow. And, and then you have other, don't worry about the ones at the end. Um, those are kind of like guides generally this food is considered a slow or a medium or a fast. You'll look at the majority of food is in the fast category. Most things you're going to eat most likely, unless you're eating like low carb is um, like fruits, vegetables, breads um, are all kind of in the fast category. And what that means is generally that food has, has like a two to three hour or less impact. Um, so you, you probably to, if you want the, lowest spike and don't want loop to be adding insulin a little bit later in the game um then you probably want to do the shortest one that makes sense so if you have a meal that you know hits at a decent rate but it's more of a four hour or a three hour i would probably if it's a four hour entry i would use taco if it's kind of like a four hour impact because if most of it will be at the beginning it's the it's the fastest option that you can use that still keeps the impact inside its window but you can't use lollipop because a four hour uh, food entry would be too far past lollipop and what you'd see is if you use the lollipop icon kind of near the three hour 
and then definitely after that, um, you, you might see a rise because Loop's backing off, or it's, maybe it's been backing off um, earlier because it thinks that um, it's got more of a watered down expectation of how much the carbs are going to hit. So it's not going to help early in the meal, um, and it won't help at all at the end of the meal after it's seen all the carbs because it's, you picked a really short entry for a meal that might be a little bit longer, like a burrito or a taco. So, um, Kenny, I have a couple of questions. Yeah. Um, one is on that previous screen, um, on one entry, um, yeah, you show a pancake and an apple. How did you get two on one line? Oh, so you just tap them a bunch of times. You can, you can so, add yeah, you just tap on the food type, and then once you have the cursor in there, you can just tap on a couple different icons. It's not unusual to see three or four or five of my daughters doing the entry um, to represent every single thing that's on her plate at lunch. You know, cucumber and, and a and carrot I'm, and an apple. I'm really curious. Um, everyone on here is looping. Everyone on here is pretty proactive. Um, does this sometimes seem overwhelming to some of you um, to put in two or three? Not if you have kids, because that's a whole different arena, but is, is it ever just, I just want to put in a taco and go. So if you have thoughts, just throw it in chat. I bet most people do. If you just hit the normal icons on that row, it doesn't actually insert the icon into the entry. So if you do a lollipop, um, that the normal one you see there on the front, um, it will be a blank. It would look like the one on the bottom. It has no picture. Okay. That's what it would look like. So by default, all the entries have no pictures. So this is one of those days either we did it as we went or um, I went back and added them. <laughs> uh, probably I am more diligent about adding them if I want to look back and say, well, this was new food. What did it do? So I'll do that. Okay, yeah, Glenn just says, I almost always use taco unless there are bread carbs, and then I divide between lollipop and taco 50-50, I think. Um, from Gail, yes, absolutely overwhelmed. Most times I use taco because it's too much to try to enter all the different types of food absorption types I'm eating. Yeah, um, yeah and, and I think taco is a really good one for like a like a heavier combination meal, like a, like a dinner, you know. Um, if you got enough fat in the meal, like potatoes with butter and then you're eating other stuff too then three hours probably fine um and you know three hour like taco is like kate says is just a good one to just use if you don't really know um it won't give you so much up front um but it'll still help you if stuff kind of hangs out longer it'll kind of help with like later fat and protein rises a little bit maybe not as much as the four hour one but so it's kind of a good middle of the road option um to go with so feel free to use anything you want. I just found that to avoid spikes, you need to use the shortest one that works, basically. Now, with Tessa, you're probably not going to have much insight into this. But for the adult T1Ds in the chat, is there any insight into the other feature? Because whenever I'm sitting here and just finished my five or maybe six ounces of wine um and i'm like going in to enter red wine using the other feature in carb absorption mm -hmm. should i be changing the amount right so, these those yeah. items definitely come into play as like a little bit more variable sure so the other section doesn't um recommend any or even like force a, an absorption change um so you have to pick your own we use the other icons. There's one in there for a, like a bowl with a spoon in it. It gets used a lot for oatmeal or whatever. Um, so you, you have to pick what you yeah, want Yeah, what I eat. find, Cassidy, on wine is the, the liver is like a battery. And, you know, it, hold, it stores glucose, right? So when you drink wine, it all gets stored. You then go to sleep, and at 2 in the morning, it goes zap. It goes out. So my, my premise is the, the, I don't enter wine at all. I let the algorithm catch it at two in the morning. Yeah. Okay. Cause you're gonna have a drop and then a hit. Um, yeah. I guess yeah, what, I, I what I'm what actually trying work. to zone into are the functionality of the other features. The other. Yeah. So the functionality yeah. of the other picture is it doesn't change your absorption. So whatever the default is when you open that screen, which is like three hours, it won't change it. 
Whereas if you pick, if you haven't changed the absorption time and you just tap on one of the icons and you pick from that list, it will change it usually for you, like to a two hour. Whatever the first one you tap is, it will change. Actually, the, I take that back. Whatever the longest one is. You know, so if you answer like, uh, what do we have for dinner tonight? Uh, we had pot pie. So like if you answer a couple of vegetables like corn, potatoes, and then you tap on the chicken, um, it will change the absorption time for that card entry to four. Um, so when you're first entering it, if you choose one of the other ones, that's the only icon you picked, then it will not adjust your car, your absorption time automatically. It will, you'll have to go down and tap on the absorption line and change the number yourself. Okay. From um, Teresa, it's just an icon, no effect on absorption. Yep. Uh, it's reference that I had a glass of wine with dinner. So it just <laughs> lets you know. It might um, even remind you, you need to maybe set a, a lower um, override in, in the future to cut your basil back. Um, but it'll show up in, yeah, it'll show up in Night Scout. Um, from Carrie's Mac, is there an issue, and I'm not sure if I'm reading this correctly, is there an issue with making Lollipop 30, Taco 1.5, and Pizza, I guess it's 3.0, um, Pizza 2.5, if you're having a longer absorbing meal, are you just editing the length of time? Uh, yeah, so, I mean, if you want to... You can make the absorption time whatever you want for each of these. You can pick a pizza icon and change the absorption time manually to two hours. It's just like those buckets you saw in the emojis will um, – it's sort of like a recommendation. And what the system will automatically change it to the first time you're entering those pictures. Uh, if you're doing the normal standard lollipop taco pizza, you can go into the code and change as a code customization. It's in Luke Docs. Change what each one of those represents. The challenge is fast is still the first one, medium is still the second one, and slow is still the third one. So if you, like for my daughter, she uses those icons as her guide when we're not with her sometimes. She should be asking us <laughs> what to do, but she doesn't always. She goes in and says, oh, I'm having this and this and this and this. And so she enters that, and then she enters the carbs if she has the carb count available to her, and she won't ever ask us working on that. Um, but at least it's a good guide and gives her a good absorption time on there, but if I change the default for fast for the lollipop to be one hour instead of two, that means everything in that, that emoji bucket um, that's fast will default to one. So like we've, we've toyed with the idea of, um, it's, in a, it's a pull request actually in GitHub to change the lollipop to mean uh, low treatment, in which case you would use a 30 minute absorption time for a lot of low treatments like juice or candy. Um, uh, for a few reasons, but if you do that, you just have to make sure that I mentioned to Pete, you got to shift all those. You need like another bucket, basically. You got to move all those icons around. So you can change them. I've done it where I've made lollipop, you know, a half hour or an hour, and then taco was actually a two hour, and then pizza is a three and a half to kind of split the difference. Um, but then the icons are a little less useful. <laughs> Hopefully that answered the question. All right, here we go. Um, so what are these, uh, what affects these numbers? Mostly carb ratio and sensitivity. So if you make either of those numbers stronger, um, so, um, uh, yeah, I should, I mixed that up. Sorry. I, it was, was originally two separate lines, but if you make it, um, if you make either one of them stronger, you'll see fewer carbs absorbed. If you make either of them weaker, you'll see more carbs absorbed. And the reason is, if you look at the carb ratio, really what it's saying is how many units of insulin does it take to cover each carb? Um, to cover each, sorry, each carb I put insulin. Sorry, come back, come back, come back. Um, let me edit that real quick so you guys don't see it wrong. Each carb and stronger. I'll just get rid of that so I don't confuse people. All right. Um, okay, so stronger numbers means it'll see fewer carbs because it's how many units of insulin to cover each carb. So if you say it's a lower carb ratio or stronger carb ratio, you need um, more units of insulin to cover each carb. So it's going to take more insulin on board, turn that into a carb shown in this graph. ISF, same kind of idea where, uh, but really what it means if you, um, is it on here? Oh, it's on the prediction page. I had it up before. Uh, when you when you tap on the um, glucose graph and you get into the 
uh, prediction page, you'll see basically what it says is the ISF, how it interprets ISF is the more sensitive you are to insulin, the more points, more MGDL or MMOL, um, your, your blood sugar will move with a single carb, which instinctively makes sense if you think a young child like Tesla who's six, what a 200 ISF means is that one car will move for 20 points. It's probably about right. Um, if you have a sensitivity of 100, then one car will move you 10 points. Um, so you guys can kind of know that just by, if you didn't have a whole lot of insulin on board, you take a, eat a, eat a glucose tab or whatever, you know how many points that would move you. Um, so that's kind of the idea is there's a, there's a correlation between your sensitivity and how many points one carb will move your blood sugar. So a higher sensitivity, like 200, means that if she had 10 carbs, it expects a certain amount of movement um, of your blood sugar. So it will take, it'll see um, more carbs, uh, sorry, less carbs per whatever. I'm, apparently I messed up that slide a little bit. I thought it made sense. Maybe I just made it more confusing. Um, but what we're gonna do is try it. So this will be easier. So. Um, Go ahead and go into your settings, and um, what we're going to do is we're going to change your carb ratio by 50%, up or down, you pick, and then we're going to change, and you're going to come back to the screen, your current, what you've seen we've eaten today, and you're going to see how it looks. If you need to, take a screenshot now, if you need to, if you can't remember, but look at your carb list now, then you're going to go and change your carb ratio by a big number, by 50%. So you have a 20 to 1 carb ratio, make it 10 or make it 30, take your pick. Just remember which way you went, up or down. And then come back into the screen and see how the numbers changed. Um, and then we're going to do the same thing with ISF after you do that. And what you'll see, just kind of like jumping to the end, what you'll see is it'll once you change both of them by 50%, you'll end up with the same exact or pretty close to the same numbers you started with. So that means if your carb ratio and ISF are, they're sort of in lockstep. You can keep these numbers, the screen looking exactly like this, like I have on my screenshot if I were to, to double everything or to half everything. Does that make sense? So Glenn, you wanna, um, I'll try to, no, I don't wanna try to present. It's not working. Um, no, maybe I'll try. Try one more time. Not working, okay. Um, so Glenn, would you, can you still yeah, present? I yeah, hang on. Let me uh, change my carb ratios back, though. <laughs> yeah, sorry. You're doing it. You're you're being a good student. You're following the directions. Um, so this is this is how you can uh, come in here. Once your carb ratios and ISF are close, you can use this. Uh, and the absorption time is probably right. And you don't have a lot of entries around those to kind of confuse it. So if you kind of isolate a meal that you're pretty um, confident in and Luke's not seeing the same number of carbs, you can go in and change your, your carb ratios and your ISF uh, to help you figure out what those are. Um, like if you're really pretty confident in your carb ratio, for example, but you're not so sure about your ISF, you might just want to change your ISF and make these entries look like they should be if you're confident, at least in the meal that you're looking at. Like now, yeah, we well, there you go. So that's the, that's the example. Yeah. And that, this is pretty much the last slide. So um, that's that's the idea. If you guys change the carb ratio and the ISF at the same rate, percentage-wise, you will see um, – you'll, you'll end up seeing um, that they sort of change. Uh, Jessica almost never eats a taco. You need to move to Southern California, Jessica. <laughs> uh, uh, let's see. Heather, for the foods with surprise spike four to six hours later – like Chinese food, mm -hmm. uh, have been entering regular carbs as two hours and then the same number of carbs at eight hours. It only adds a little insulin up front, but then it, uh, when the spike happens, later the loop knows it's coming and give insulin when it starts. That's interesting. I hadn't tried to do uh, like an obscenely long absorption time um, so that it wouldn't yeah, be Yeah, because that's interesting because it would be looking for uh, carbs for 12 hours. Yeah, and once it's solid, it should stop helping. Or so, six hours, excuse me. It would look for nine hours. Yeah. Yeah, yeah I mean, I guess that uh, – I'll have to try that. That's interesting. The only other thing I've tried that I know that a few others have mentioned is um, 
especially for food that you know the spike is coming and it usually comes you know at a certain time like uh we do we have donuts at church on sunday um and so uh i know that i don't bolus for it all up front and i do like a two hour entry typically at the beginning of like 40 carbs 30 40 carbs and then um i'll add like a, some for fat and i'll put it out when i usually see that rise happen is usually about 90 minutes to two hours after the original entry i'll go ahead and 10 30 a.m i put in the you know 40 carbs at two hours depending on the donut she's eating and then i'll answer another like 10 carbs let's say uh at like noon and i'll answer it right now and i won't bolus for it but i'll answer it and so um like a two-hour entry for that so that will cover the fat rise that's later or a heavy protein rise that you know from a meal certain will happen so you could answer like a two or a three hour entry absorption entry into the future when you know that that rise is coming um, and just put it out there now you don't need to wait and come back to it um, that's lame so you can just put it out there in the future or i'll have to try the um really long absorption time so it offers less up front less likely to cause a low but it does in fact keep the window of time it's looking for more food open it can affect your later entries if it doesn't see all of those carbs if you didn't if you put like, too many but uh it's an interesting thing i'll have to try that um, it does a great job, Kenny. Thank you so, so yeah, much. Yeah, it's great. Um, we're getting good feedback, and um, we'll see you on Sunday. All right. Thank you, everybody. Have a good evening or day or wherever you are. <laughs>